Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Feinard. I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you tell the audience uh, what we're going to be talking about today? So I've got some stats for you about cold email, and I would love to know what you think because um, I read them out on a webinar that I did a couple weeks ago. I, I thought about inviting you, but I just thought, no, I want this to be really good. So, so I yeah. didn't. My apologies for that. And of course, you can find the link for that down below in the description or wherever you're looking at this. But yeah, several stats. And um, as I was reading them, I did think, no way, like that that can't be right. Or that's way more than I thought. Or, that's so much less than I was anticipating. And uh, th- I thought this would make a good podcast episode. So I've got a few to read out to you okay. and a few I'm going to make you guess. And uh, and we can kind of go into the what and the why these are these are the state of play. Now, these are not ours. These are from various sources all across Google. And uh, I'm not going to bother naming all of them because I'll be here until next Thursday. So uh, are you ready? Uh, let's do it. Okay. What percentage of sales emails even get opened out of all of them sent? 24%. No, you, dude, get out of my Google Slides document. What? Are you are you what? on my screen right now? No. 23.9. <laughs> There's no way you just guessed that. There's no way. I just I mean just just I I I would just, I just read that, but I I used to think it was about 27, but recently I read an article that showed it was about 24. Well, I hope you're not going to guess every other stat, but yeah, I thought that was probably a smidge high, but on on about the right lines. I was thinking twenty percent, something like that. One in five blended average, probably okay. about right. If you were getting less than twenty percent, I'd say you either got really shitty contact data, or you've just got the worst subject line of all time, or you're landing in spam. Uh, any other reason you think it should be higher than that? No, I mean, I, I just know, you know, as I said, you know, looking at our statistics and I look at our obviously our AEs and I used to, I used to be in there doing the emails. I've always saw it between 20 to 30. And then when you really dig in deeper long term, um, it's, it's about, yeah, about 25%. So I would say one every four, uh, you'll get open. And obviously, uh, it'll be interesting to say what you say with the, uh, when you ask what the actual reply rate or something like that is, because that number I know is very low. Okay. Want to take a guess? I'm going to say, I know it's between one, well, I know for me it's between one to 3%, but I'm going to say 2.2. I think you suck. Um, It's actually 8.5, but that depends on how you calculate that. So I'm going to say that your number of one and 2% is about the number of emails sent to reply. I think this is a bit more about the open to reply. So if you do the one in four math, I think that stacks. I mean, it's like you've done this before, huh? It's it's well, like you, you know what you're eight, talking eight, about. Eight eight percent of twenty five would be two percent of a hundred, so it'd be about two percent. And then it typically is between one and three percent. Three percent is actually pretty high. Yeah. Uh, one percent is pretty low, but usually in that uh, that one to three percent is what I would say the expected uh, reply rate would be. So that's that's the average cold email response rate being eight point five percent across that that would be in in definition sent to reply. Yeah. So yeah. you could say your uh, open to reply is the true metric because obviously you can't reply without opening, can you? So, yeah. so there's that one. All right. So getting on to my third one now, the top twenty five percent of email campaigns sent by sales reps have a what percent reply rate? Reply rate the top. So the top twenty five percent of sales reps. What would that? Let's be? let's use the math that the the stat before has used. So that's being sent to reply, not open to reply. Okay, so then we have twenty five percent that is opened, um, and you're asking what the reply rate of that would be for the top twenty five percent. I'm going yeah, to. Yeah, sorry, say, I just realized I said that the wrong way around. I meant from opens to reply, so it's not going to be one point two percent. Okay, so I'm going to say fifteen. 15 so basically double the average yeah i've got 20 percent. so i thought that was pretty high if, if i had a 20 percent reply rate on my campaign and that's bearing in mind the top 25 percent of email campaigns sent that, yeah. that's a lot of campaigns sent getting 20 percent or more isn't it yeah i would i would i would have thought i would have thought yeah i mean 20 seems high i would have thought 15 so i'm a little bit off there okay you caught me on one you caught me on one yeah, so it's all right. So let's play that out then. So if you sent 100 emails and you had a 
Twenty percent reply rate, uh, open rate. Sorry, you have twenty five people of that hundred that open it, and then out of that, you would have one in five. So it's five, five replies. Five people. Yeah, exactly. So five replies, and then you might get a no for now, or yes, and a general reply. So you're probably booking two demos, maybe getting one no and one for later, something like that. Yep. Yeah. Huh. That's not bad in 100 emails. It's always interesting to put it back to 100 emails and see actually what well, you got from that. And now look at if you do if you're doing you know not mass emailing but you're doing personalized emailing at scale and you're sending two three hundred a day. That's 15 conversations a day. Yeah, provided you're keeping the right quality and quantity and context though. Of course. As soon as you variate, then then that's gone down, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Cool. Approximately 50 percent of cold email campaigns sent have a reply rate of under what? So the lowest 50% of cold email campaigns on average have a reply rate of under what percent? Under 4%. Under 4. You've gone low. It's 10. 10%. Okay. So most of them, the lion's share, the majority of all emails have a reply rate of under 10%. You could have guessed that, but I would have gone lower like you did, considering the average is 85 so yeah. to be slightly above average, you're like well above there in the top echelons of people that send emails. Okay. I would have I thought have that would have been you, low. Ollie. Okay. What day of the week is the best day to send emails? I've done these stats based on autoclose emails and it was, oh God, was it Monday or Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday, very closely followed by Wednesday and Thursday and Monday. All like really, really, really close that you wouldn't have made a difference. Are we paying attention? Yes, it is actually Tuesday. Uh, but well, what I will ask you then also on top of that is what's the best time to send an email? It is after lunch and after breakfast. So about 10, 11, and then about 1 and 2 were the best for open rate, click rate, and reply rate that I found. So it's actually between uh, 11 and 12 and 1 to 5. Three and the reason why is West Coast three hours. Uh, you'll get that three hour time change. So usually twelve to one when they get right in the office, or eight thirty when they're getting in the office. Uh, so that's why eleven to twelve, and then obviously after lunch, which is kind of the morning for West Coast. So yeah, pretty close. Yeah, well, I suppose that's a agnostic though, isn't it? That accounts for both time zones if you were to schedule to one person. Yeah, and, and I'm sure this would be different if you look at Europe and Australia and different countries as well. What about the weekend? Have you got any stats for that? I, I have some, but they um they don't say that it's worth doing really. So actually, funny enough, Saturday is actually better than Friday. Okay. And the typical reason I find in, so here's what I found from my experience. And you know, when I used to when I was growing auto clothes was if you are uh, a C level or below Monday to Friday, C levels and above, I actually got more reply from somebody in the C level on a Saturday or Sunday than I would Monday to Friday. And the reason why is most C-level people, Saturday and Sunday morning, typically they're having their coffee, reading their newspapers, checking quick emails, but they're only getting a few emails in the morning on a Saturday or Sunday. Monday to Friday, they're half jammed. So Saturday, Sunday, they're more likely. And Sunday night, most CEOs start planning their week ahead. So if you send it at like 6, 7 o'clock p.m. at night, right after they're done dinner, C-level people are usually checking their emails, scheduling it for the following week. I would have gone for Sunday morning or Sunday evening yeah. instead of Saturday. I could see someone buying their groceries or something Saturday like that, waiting day. to pay, and then the phone comes up and they're going through email, or maybe in the morning having a coffee. But um, but I can see that for higher level people, yeah. for lower level people, I bet it goes the opposite. It goes right off a cliff. It, the, the junior manager is like, yeah, it's Saturday, man. I don't work today. Get out of here. So yeah, and and that is what I saw from you know looking at hundreds of thousands of emails in my auto close account from years and years was exactly like you said it's all you know anyone that's not a c-level leadership team it just drops drastically on weekends okay i got one more stat for you and then i'll ask you what you think it means so 24 percent of campaigns sent have a reply rate of between 10 and 20 percent now if you compare that back to my other stats i'll remind you then that the average response rate is 8.5 percent the lowest 50 percent of emails that are sent have an under 10% reply rate. So that means average is kind of in the like 40%, to, like lower 40% area. And then the 24% of emails have a between 10 and 
and the top quarter of emails have a 20% or above rate. Yeah. So basically to be average is slightly, I was going to say below par in golf, that's good. Slightly below the middle. Yeah. But it seems a bit like if you can get even re- just a tiny little bit above average, you're basically exceptional. Yeah. By by these stats, which I think I think that's a bit weird. But um in, in your experience, you've obviously seen a lot of sales reps over your career and you've sent a lot of emails yourself. How dramatic is that sort of bell curve there? It's either you're in the middle or you're completely terrible or you're completely brilliant, it seems like, with that. Personally, I find it's most people not in the middle. I think people are either really good or really bad. Um, the top ones do things differently than the bottom ones. And those could be like we've talked about many times. It could be you know, the subject line to get them to open, the length of their email, their call, number of calls to action, how simple they make it, how salesy it is. So I would find it's either, you know, a person writing an email is A, being way too salesy and the reply rate will be terrible, or they're really good and not being salesy, trying to find a challenge, pain point, value, something to trigger that person, um, personalizing it, doing their research. And then I don't find there's many people in the middle ground. That's my personal opinion, though. I've seen plenty of people who are really good in theory, but when they, like, we could talk about it for, all day long and we could read a million people's emails suggest things but if we were to write our own for them it's then much more difficult but yeah i've I've probably seen the same you you don't really get like okay because what is okay like not that many replies it's either got to be good enough to get one or not good enough to get one it's it's kind of a sharp cliff so maybe that's what it is just average is playing the numbers maybe that's what the middle looks like so you know here's a random question for you Open rates, you know, so if you were personalizing um, a subject line, how much do you think that increases your odds or your open rate percentage? So say the open rate percentage is, you know, what you said. What do you think the increase in percentage would be if you personalize it? How much are we talking about personalizing? Using, Using the recipient's name. Let's use that for example. Name, I think, probably gives you up to 5% more, maybe. I personally don't care about it because I know it's a token. And also, like, I don't use people's names very much when I speak. I don't know if I don't, like, when we're talking one to one, I go, I don't say, oh, sure, and I've got to tell you this because I'm already talking to you. So I don't naturally speak like that. So I therefore pick it up even more. But if you're going to go like fully over the top, then I would say if it's very one to one, like uniquely one to one, you can get 40%. Why not? But if it's not that, I think 40 would be outstanding, no matter how you're trying to do the personalization, no matter what you drag in or how uh, unique your list is so that the personalization makes sense across one to the last contact, then getting above 30 and toward 40 is very, very good. Yeah, and it would be in the middle there, actually. So it's usually, you're looking at about 10% increase from your average of 24, your average, you're putting about 34, 34, 35. So right between 30 and 40. Is that to add the name? Yes. Okay. What about the company? Do you have that at all? I don't. I do remember seeing something that if you add an emoji, that was an interesting one. Right. Um, it wasn't relatively big in the grand scheme of things, but it does increase it by just under 10%. I think that would be a blended average, though. The like super big shot CEOs probably aren't too fussed about your thumbs up emoji. but No, they're not like the tackiness. Yeah, but like a more person who's less experienced of being reached out to let's say that the the novelty is oh i'll open that so that's probably yeah. what that is yeah any other stats that you had that you wanted to discuss on the show today no just obviously the uh the thing we're talking about is a segment of our webinar about how to increase your reply rates because obviously you want to send an email you want to get a reply don't you and hopefully the reply books your meeting so that's obviously linked below but that's it. I thought this would be fun to put you through your paces and test whether you do know what you're talking about with your code email or not. And apparently you do. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ollie. And also thank you everyone for listening to today's episode. I'm um, talking about more open rates and emails. Um, hopefully you guys got some value. Uh, once again, this has been a blast to uh, do another episode for you guys. Um, and everybody listening, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a five-star review. Let us know if you want us to bring any other guests on the show and subscribe so you don't miss the next show. Thanks again and see you soon.